This tutorial explains how to draw interactive box plots using the Blotly package in the R programming language. The tutorial was created in collaboration with Kirby White, who is a researcher at the Seattle Pacific University and an expert when it comes to interactive graphics in R. So without too much talk, I'll head it over to Kirby. Hey everybody, Kirby White here to do another tutorial about the Plotly graphing library in the R programming language. This tutorial is going to cover box plots. Let's jump right in. And for this tutorial to follow along, all you need is the Plotly package. If you haven't done so, go ahead and install it with this line of code and then load it with this one. I've already done that, so I'm not going to run those uh, lines right now. And I'm going to create our example data set in an object called DF. And it is coming from the data sets package, which is preloaded in R, so you shouldn't need to install anything to get it. And then this is the chick weights uh, data set, which contains um, the weight of baby chickens or chicks from a nutrition experiment that was done a long time ago. And what we want to do is first create a box plot to look at the distribution of the chick weights across all um uh, all nutrition groups so this is all chicks in the experiment regardless of how they were fed and box plots are very informative for statisticians about the distribution of um, numeric values but they can be a little complex for somebody that's new to them and this is one of the things that i really like about plotly is that when you hover over it with your cursor it gives you more information about what you're looking at so if you've forgotten whether this line in the middle is the mean or the median or something else well if you just hover over it you can see that plotly is displaying in the hover information the that it's median and it's told you what that value is so the 50th percentile chick weight is 258. And then this line is showing you the 75th percentile, 25th percentile, the minimum and the maximum uh, weights of the chicks in this particular data set. So box plots are one of the things that I like to do in Plotly, especially if I'm going to be using it to display information to an audience that's not already familiar with uh, distribution graphs. Now, we want to look at the distribution of weight in the chicks based on what they were fed. That was the purpose of this experiment. And so to create a separate box for each uh, group of, of feed, we can add this X argument in here and map it to the feed column so that we create a separate box for each type of feed. So in this case, um, now we're displaying the uh, distribution of weight across feed types. And it's really easy to see that this one, I think is pronounced casein, that the casein one had the uh, highest median weight overall and that the horse bean uh, group, those chicks were the lightest. So probably not ideal uh, to use the horse bean. These dots, which we didn't see in the first plot, those are sometimes used in box plots to indicate outliers, meaning that um, these values were so far out from the rest of the uh, values in that group that they didn't want to be included in the summary information of the top and bottom fences. If you are interested, you can switch these to be horizontal box plots. I don't see this very often, but just to demonstrate that you can do it if you want to. All I did here is switch the X and Y arguments so that feed is now plotted on the Y axis instead of the X. And likewise with weight, now it's on X instead of Y. So that's just an option for you if you want. If we want each box to be a different color, what we can do is add a color argument to our plotly uh, function and map it to the uh, feed column, which is the one that we want to use to create a different color for each um, each value that's in there. Um, and so now you can see that there's different colors. And this sometimes helps with interpretation, especially if you have multiple graphs um, about this information. You can use a, a consistent color across those graphs so that it's easier for an audience to um, keep up or, or uh, interpret the findings across multiple graphs. I have added this show legend equals false argument here just to save space on the graph because once you add color it wants to add a legend uh, to explain what green means versus orange or something like that but on a, on a box plot it's very obvious that green corresponds with the case and feed and orange to the horse bean and so on and so forth. So I don't feel the need for a legend in this particular graph. 
One of the things that a box plot does though, and this is a criticism of box plots, is they hide more detailed information. Each box is essentially a summary of the values in the data set. And what we can do is add box points to see both the summary and individual data points at the same time. And so here is an example of that. And I'll expand this so it's a little bit wider and we have a better view of it. Um, what this is, is it's combining a scatter plot and a box plot together. So each dot here is an individual record next to the box, which is a summary of those records. And this can be really useful in an example like this, where let's look at the soybean one. We see a large gap in here between the third quartile, or I'm sorry, the 75th percentile and the maximum values. There's a gap in here. There were no chicks that were that had a weight in this. And so we might almost think of these as outliers. Now, they're not outliers because there's several of them together, but you might start to think of it that way. Or in this uh, meat meal um, group, we can see that at the median value, there's another gap between the median and almost the 75th percentile. So there's an interesting gap that's here and this large spacing. There's very few uh, below the 25th percentile. There's only three, but there's a big space that's represented with this lower fence down here. So adding box points can give you more granular information while also showing the summary information of the box plot altogether. If you want to show the mean and the median lines at the same time, you can add this box mean equals true argument to your box plots. And now the solid line is representing the median value and the dashed line is representing the mean. Now this is, I think, a great idea because very often skewed data is when the mean and median are not close to each other. So if we look at this linseed argument, you can see that the, the lines are almost on top of each other, meaning that it's basically a symmetrical data set. But here in the, in the case in one, the mean is, is quite a bit lower than the median value, which represents um, a, a, a skew. There are sort of some, some more extreme values below the median than above it. And so it could represent skewed distributions, which could affect any statistics that you need to run. Finally, one of the things that you can do is add notches. Now, notches are a more technical um, uh, piece of the statistical information. And what it does is you can see that um, the, the box is, is tapered away from the median value. And this is showing the confidence interval, interval for what that median is. And so if you're doing statistical work where you really need to be sure that the median values are different across groups, you might want to add notches so that you're able to understand the confidence interval of that median. Because if the notched portion or if the tapered portion of two boxes overlap, like in this case, the linseed and meat meal, um, portions, the, the notched values, there's some overlap here. It's a little tough to see with these, these pop-ups, but there's a chance that the, the median value of the linseed and meat meal uh, groups is actually the same and that they only appear different because of this particular sample of chicks in the experiment. So it's a little bit more of a technical thing to add to a box plot. I pretty rarely add this, but it is an interesting thing that you can add if you want to, or if it helps for your data set and your analysis. That's it for box plots. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot once again to Kirby White for his contribution to this video. In case you want to learn more about interactive box plots using the Plotly package in R, then you may check out the Statistics Globe website, because on this website Kirby White has recently published another tutorial in which he's explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, we would be very happy if you leave us some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the Statistics Globe YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases on the channel. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.